How you doing? This is Ivan from Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People. And I'm back with another idea to help you live more consciously. Today, I would like to share an old Sufi story about the wise man, Mullah Nasruddin. Nasruddin is a satirical Sufi figure who was a populist philosopher, remembered for his funny stories and anecdotes. Here is one of my favorite tales about Nasruddin. So one day, someone saw Nasruddin and he was searching for something on the ground. What have you lost, Mullah? he asked. My key, said the Mullah. So they both went down on their knees and started to look for it. After a time, the other man said, Where exactly did you drop it? In my own house, he said. Then why are you looking here? Because there is more light here than inside my own house, said the Mullah. I love this tale because I know that almost everyone can relate to the mullah. I think it's safe to say that most of us will spend our entire lives searching. Searching for love, money, happiness, success, and many other worldly desires. This search takes place mainly in our external world. A search that leads us further away from what we actually want and from who we really are. We feel that once we attain these worldly desires, that life will finally be grand, everything will be okay, and that we will be deeply fulfilled. I think that many of us deep down know that things like money, becoming famous, becoming powerful, would be really nice, but that ultimately it will not give us the peace of mind and deep fulfillment that we crave because we have plenty of celebrities who have attained everything there is to attain in terms of material wealth and enjoyment, and they make it clear for everyone to see that it's still not enough. Even Alexander the Great, who gained the entire world, but in the end, he realized he gained nothing, that the world was still not enough. He still remained unfulfilled. A part of him felt utterly empty. His life, in his eyes, was meaningless. Just like Mullah, we are all searching for fulfillment in the wrong places. We have been distracted by all the bells and whistles that society conditions us to believe that will give our lives meaning. Deep down, just like the Mullah, I know that you know where you dropped your key, but that you still keep searching for it in other places because it feels easier, it seems better, so, how do we find happiness within ourselves? Our attention is focused on the outer and not the inner. So, it's only a matter of switching that focus. Your key to fulfillment and peace is not somewhere out there, but it's somewhere inside you. You drop the key in your own house, but where is your house? You dropped the key such a long time ago and have wandered so far away from your home that you have forgotten the way back. Searching for your key to happiness is difficult because you never knew you had the key to it in the first place. It's always been there. You just need to do a little digging. It's not a matter of finding, but of rediscovering. In your journey to happiness, you got lost by believing that your identity is the personality, the mental construct who exists through the likes and dislikes that society has conditioned you to have. You mistake your personality to be who you are. It's all you know now. But if you deeply inquire, you will see that most of your personality was given to you. It was artificially made, hence why it can never satisfy you. We crave the real, the essence with which we came into this world with. The return to innocence, when we felt complete when we did not lack anything, did not want to become anything. So the question then becomes, how do you get back to your home? A home that has everything you will ever need. Meditation and proper self-observation will help you to get in tune with who you really are. Being solely identified with your mind and thoughts and feelings. You live an egocentric life. Your life is then just on the periphery very superficial. The moment you realize that this is what stands in your way of growth and fulfillment, 
you begin the process of your inner journey. You start asking yourself, what is mind? What is thought? Who am I? What am I? You then start to learn to observe and really learn from yourself and the world. There is nothing wrong with having material wealth or success, but expecting to receive deep inner fulfillment from achieving worldly desires will only lead you to much disappointment. If you can find inner fulfillment, then you can pursue your worldly desires with a completely different approach, with a lot less struggle. When you are only identified with worldly desires, you will lie, cheat, and manipulate your way to the top, only to find that you had to sell your soul for it. So now it's time for you to find your way back home. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned and I will continue to touch and build on all of today's themes. So if you are new, make sure to subscribe if these ideas resonate with you. If you did, please help me out. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and share with anyone who may find my content useful. All right, guys, I hope you're doing well. Take care. Peace.